In this modern day and age, it can be difficult for a defensive player to stand out in the midst of a fever dream for passing offenses. Often underappreciated, strong safeties play one of the most hybrid roles on the football field. That being said, there are finite responsibilities for the position. Well, mostly. Today we will be discussing the origin story of one of the most intriguing and exciting strong safeties emerging in the NFL. Cameron Curl had a high quality rookie campaign, showing that you just might not want to turn your TVs off on day 3 of the draft anymore. The 7th rounder out of Arkansas became an integral piece of one of the best defenses in football last year. Let's dig deeper into who he was, what he's done so far, and what I think he can do in the future. Crow was born on March 3, 1999 in San Diego, California. Later on, his family moved to Muskogee, Oklahoma, where he would attend their local high school. The young starter was tabbed the number 7 player in Oklahoma and number 41 safety in the class by rivals. A top 10 player in the state, he was also the number 9 player in Oklahoma and number 52 athlete in the class of 2017 by ESPN. He emerged and ascended quickly. Coached by Rafael Watkins, he totaled 89 tackles and 6 pass breakups to lead the Ruffers to a 9-2 record and the Class 6 semifinal. He also played offense where he hauled in 46 catches for 533 yards and 6 touchdowns as receiver. Curl was named to the Muskegee Phoenix All-Area Team as a defensive back and to Scouts All-Midlands Team as an athlete. As a three-star recruit out of high school, he had his choices of schools with the likes of Oklahoma, Ole Miss, TCU, Baylor, Texas Tech, and others. The 6'2", 180-pound playmaker chose Arkansas to continue his football career. Line up under Kelsey. Second and ten. In the pocket. Whoa! picked off at the 31 yard line by Cameron Curl. Cameron Curl, seventh round rookie choice out of Arkansas with the pick. Ertz was the intended receiver. Cameron Curl is just going to jam up Ertz here long enough to where Ertz really doesn't see the ball even thrown. It's thrown so quickly. There was a little wrestling match going on. You can see that Ertz never got his head around whatsoever but you talked about Cameron Curl a little bit this young man is making a name for himself he really really has become something back in there taking over for Landon Collins when he had that uh, Achilles injury assessment of what today looked like for y'all uh, I feel like it was a pretty good day but it's just still stuff we got to work on like the tackling wasn't like the best like we could do but it's just, we still got stuff to work on. What did coach, what did Chief have to say about the tackle? Uh, it wasn't our standard, and we can get better. I know we can do better than that, so I'm not too worried about it. This week was raving about some of his young defensive backs. Cameron Curl, you see the freshman from Skogie, Oklahoma. Curl there, I like him a lot. He's a physical presence at corner. Pounds, was a guy that went down early for Arkansas. They liked him a lot. The defensive secondary. And Cameron Curl is a true freshman. I think he's going to be a really good player for Arkansas down the In his freshman year, he started 11 of 12 games at cornerback. He slid into the starting role after an injury to junior Ryan Pooley. He didn't miss a beat, finishing sixth on the team and tied for fourth among SEC freshmen in tackles. He also led the team with eight pass breakups. Those eight pass breakups were the most by an Arkansas freshman since Lawrence Richardson led the team with 17 in 2001. Curl was one of 10 players, including two true freshmen, to wrap up the year with over 45 tackles and eight pass breakups. In his sophomore campaign, he started all 11 of his games at strong safety. Over half of his snaps came in run defensive schemes, 362 out of 722 according to PFF. His snap share began to rise, tallying over 70 plus snaps including a season high 76 against Texas A&M. His 53 tackles landed him 4th on the team with 27 solo tackles included. Against North Texas, he broke up 5 passes while also forcing a fumble and tacking on a quarterback hurry. In every game he played, he recorded at least 3 tackles, with at least 5 in 6 of his appearances. 
On September 22nd against Auburn, he totaled a season-high 9 stops, with 4 solo tackles paired alongside. He posted a 5 spot against North Texas, Alabama, Ole Miss, and LSU, banking 7 tackles versus Vanderbilt. His season debuted against Eastern Illinois with an overall 70 grade and a 78.8 tackling mark. His best defensive performance came in their matchup against North Texas when his play earned him a 73.7 overall grade and a 74.6 in pass coverage. His tackling hit its zenith against the Aggies, sitting at almost 82 and then an impressive 78.8 mark in that category against Tulsa in their homecoming matchup. Curl concluded the year with an overall 70.5 defensive mark, all on the way to helping his team total 882 tackles on the season with 15 forced fumbles as a unit. Heading into his junior season, he was dubbed a member of the preseason All-SEC third team voted on by the coaches. Some very recognizable names on that team were Justin Jefferson, Jalen Waddell, and JC Horn among others. Despite missing the final game of the 2019 season, he started all 11 games that he played in at strong safety. He racked up 682 snaps on defense out of 789 overall snaps, which was third most on Arkansas's roster. He was again a prolific tackler with 76 total tackles, which was fourth on the team, and 46 solo tackles, which was the second most by a Razorback. Curl was the first player in the NCAA in 2019 to record a sack an interception, and score a touchdown on a fumble recovery. The craziest part? He accomplished that feat within the first two weeks of the season. He recorded double-digit tackle totals twice, once against Texas A&M and then again versus Portland State. The first two sacks of his collegiate career came against the Vikings, making him the first Razorback since Alonzo Highsmith to record an interception and sack in the same game since 2011. He played elite football against Portland State, earning Pro Football Focus SEC's Team of the Week honors and had a flashy highlight forcing and recovering a fumble for a 69-yard score against Ole Miss. Corral, late pitch, and that'll net Ole Miss a couple more yards, and the ball came loose! Arkansas with a takeaway! Cameron Curl with the run back, and the Rebels finally... Curl still strutting to the five and a score. Right through traffic in a 68 yard return. Whoa, the mistake by Corral gave Arkansas an opportunity in the first touchdown of the game. Corral pitched it late. Cooley got stood up and he got stripped. Cameron Curl, the junior from San Diego by way of Muskogee, Oklahoma. Through traffic and into the end zone, eventually. It was part of an eight tackle game against the Rebels, wherein he posted an overall grade of 88.5 with a superb coverage mark of 90.4. He followed that up with a career high nine tackles against Colorado State, posting an 84.9 tackling grade, just one of four marks above 82 for his 2019 season. On September 28th, he recorded 12 stops in Arlington against Texas A&M. He racked up 11 tackles against Western Kentucky University, being the only player with double-digit tackles that day, including 1.5 tackles for loss, which was his most outside of a two-sack day previously against Portland State. Against LSU, he forced and recovered a fumble for the second time on November 23rd. He excelled against the pass yet again against Auburn with a 90.1 coverage grade and an 88.1 overall defensive mark. His season concluded with an 89.6 overall coverage grade and an 87.6 final defensive grade for his third and final run. Curl moving on from Arkansas. Curl has declared for the NFL draft following his third season on the Hill. The safety tweeted out the news this afternoon. Curl led the Hogs in picks with two this past season. He was fourth on the team in tackles with 76. Curl had two sacks and recovered two fumbles he forced. He returned one fumble for a touchdown at Ole Miss. Cam played his high school ball at Muskogee in Oklahoma. I guess because you talk about just your, your decision to, to leave college a little early and, and head to the draft. Uh, it was my decision. I feel like it was the best decision for me. Like it was just my time to go. Did you consult anybody? Did your dad have any input in it? You talk to him. With? I mean, I'm gonna talk to my parents, but it was my decision. How about today? I feel like I did good. Just did the five ten five and DB drills. Like I do DB drills every day, so.
Cameron Curl was now slated to go pro. His scouting report showed a lot of raw promise. Let's see what boxes he checked when we read his notes as follows. 6 foot 2 frame, 206 pounds, giving him ideal size to cover tight ends. 3 year starter at Arkansas, a bit of a surprise he left early. Projects well as a traditional strong or box safety with plus ability in cover 2. Will click and close quickly to the line of scrimmage. Physical safety who can disengage from blockers. It wasn't all good news though, as he did carry a notable grouping of negatives. The weaknesses were as follows. More of a hitter than a tackler, which leads to extra yardage, takes poor angles to the football, lacks range in zone coverage, he also struggled in man coverage, only two interceptions in his three years at Arkansas. He was a big, physical player who projected as an underneath safety in cover two schemes. Even with the necessary size to cover tight ends in the slot, he could be easily beaten by receivers inside and didn't have the feet or long speed to turn and run with slot receivers. Curl had the potential to develop into a backup safety, but that's only if he could prove that he could match up more than only tight ends. He was graded a 55 and compared to the likes of Trey Boston or Doug Middleton. Now with all of those factors in mind, where would Curl stack up on draft day? When evaluating the 2020 draft, there was a significant amount of depth. It was a deep draft class, especially at safety. There were bigger names clustered in the second round, with the likes of Xavier McKinney, Kyle Duggar, Grant Delpit, Antoine Winfield Jr., and Jeremy Chin. That should give you an idea of just how stacked this position group was. Other notable names taken were Julian Blackman by the Colts in the third, Legereus Sneed taken by the Chiefs in the fourth, and Jordan Fuller drafted by the LA Rams in the sixth round. Out of 22 total safeties taken, the Arkansas product was the 18th selected. It wasn't until the 216th overall pick that Curl's life would change forever. In a local media conference call, Curl said he liked to play fast and create turnovers. He also highlighted his ability to learn new defenses quickly, which would have been especially important in a season where the NFL was continuing to deal with the surging repercussions from the COVID-19 pandemic. Even though he started two of his college seasons at strong safety, he was confident in his ability to play quarterback at the next level. Curl brought forth something which had been a recurrent pattern in most of Washington's 2020 draft class that being position flexibility, which was a prevalent theme. Analysts like Lance Zerline praised the safety's size, instincts, and competitiveness, but doubted his speed and plus position characteristics. There was no choice. Improvement wasn't just an option, but in fact the only way he would see any meaningful action on the field. There was plenty of buzz in training camp about the football team's safety room. Landon Collins was the undisputed starter at strong safety. The real question brewing was who would start opposite the perennial pro bowler? Troy Apke, their 2018 fourth rounder, and the recently acquired Sean Davis were presumed to be the leaders of the pack in that regard. A familiar bench player was DeShazer Everett who was captain of the special teams unit. His solid tackling and decent coverage yielded to reports that he could slide in as a third or even fourth safety on the depth chart, providing leadership in tandem with depth. It was believed that Washington would only carry a maximum of 5 safeties in 2020, expecting one of the bottom feeders of that time, either Cameron Curl or the second year Jeremy Reeves, to get cut. Thankfully, it didn't quite pan out that way with Sean Davis being cut in training camp and Reeves being relegated to the practice squad. There was daylight, but there wasn't quite a breakthrough. Not yet at least. In week 1 of the 2020 season, the Washington football team surprised the Philadelphia Eagles with a dominant defensive beatdown spearheaded by the ferocious D-line spotlighting the rookie Chase Young. But the number 2 overall pick wasn't the only rookie balling out that day. Cameron Curl burst onto the scene with 2 tackles for loss and 3 total tackles, contributing to the decimation of Philly's offense. He played almost as many reps in the slot as he did in the box, 11 and 10 respectively. His two tackles for loss tied for the team lead on a day where the defense racked up 13 tackles for loss and 8 sacks. That obliteration halted all offensive momentum for the Eagles, yielding 27 unanswered points after the initial 0-17 hole. Crow might not have been a household name alongside Landon Collins or other more recognizable names of the safety corps, but he made his impact felt early. Tuning into week 7, defensive dynamics were about to drastically change. Troy Apke's role was waning after starting weeks 1 through 5. He began to take a backseat to Everett. 
Washington stomped Dallas 25-3 with another masterful performance, but the biggest storyline wasn't a game W, but rather a lost starter. Landon Collins tore his Achilles in the second quarter after he was off to a great start. Cowboys will try it again on third down. Washington trying to give a lot to look at here. Dalton stands in, good coverage downfield, so he's got to tuck it and run and dive, and it depend on the spot as Young tripped him up. He's a yard short, it's fourth and one. There's an injured player for Washington. And you see the coverage right here, really nowhere for Andy Dalton to go. the injured player and it was looked like non-contact we saw Landon Collins leave the game let's check him with Pam yeah Landon Collins immediately went to the medical tent where he was evaluated Washington got back with a pretty quick response on his injury they tell me Collins has suffered an ankle injury and won't return also guys just watch the Dallas defense huddle up seems they're wanting to kind of stem the tide and get each other on the same page all right, Pam, and we see Collins headed off. He's a really important part of that defense. Three-time Pro Bowler, one of the leaders of the back end. It did not look good. Number 31 had his best run-stopping game, earning an 82.3 mark with a majority of his snaps, 23, coming from the box. Despite the silver lining, critics believe Curl was the interim starter at strong safety with Everett supplementing free safety. They thought they would have to scramble formations and personnel to fill the gap but they didn't quite see the bigger picture of their 7th rounder's role just yet. Week 13 had Washington slated as heavy underdogs against the undefeated Steelers on their home turf of Heinz Field. They stunned the football world by keeping Big Ben and his deep receiver group relatively quiet. In a 23-17 scoreline, Cameron Curl earned his best tackling grade of the year, an 81.6. It was well deserved when putting on tape and seeing him punish Pittsburgh receivers with his underrated hit stick. Very good defensive lines. There's a nice play right here at the top. That, that's where the kick out was supposed to happen and kind of clutters everything up there, actually gets down in on the tackle. Steelers go out of jumbo. They bring on Chase Claypool now. Snell, try it again. Snell, not going to get there again. He is close, but Cameron Curl came up from the secondary to stop him. It'll be third and goal. That's a nice job by Washington. Because watch right here, a little sidestep there. Now you get your momentum and you lower your pad level. And you can see just a little bit short right there with the football. While he wasn't the best tackler per se, he was great at laying the boomstick and making all of his body presence felt in a collision. The stats weren't eye-popping, but this was by far his most complete game as a starter. It was the only game for him in 2020 that every grade, both defense, run defense, tackling, pass rush, and coverage all graded out at or over a 60. He was now an integral part of that defense, playing snaps at varying positions throughout all three levels. Flash forward to week 14, the Washington football team was set to showdown against the Niners in the desert due to California's lockdowns. The stage was set for a highlight reel defensive outing. In a tight NFC East, the rookies led the way. Chase Young had a fumble return touchdown in the second quarter that shifted the momentum. Then in the third quarter, the Arkansas product was about to put himself on the map. Nick Mullins delivered a late pass on a use check wheel route, and Curl locked in. He was already in the flight path before the pass was even 5 yards out of the quarterback's hands. He swept through like a ninja, slicing through the air, whisking away the pigskin in his arms, then flying down the sideline for a sweet score and a pick 6 to tack onto the team total. This catapulted Washington into first place in their signature style of winning, 
slow-paced offense paired with opportunistic defense. He earned a 74.6 coverage grade, an 81.2 pass rush grade, and a 72.9 overall defensive grade, all of which would end up as his second best marks when all was said and done. The talk of himself being a difference maker in the media back when he was drafted was coming to fruition. This was him taking full advantage of the circumstances, of the injuries, of the limelight. He carried that 7th round selection like a chip on his shoulder and his confidence continually grew, game after game. This was when the floodgates swung open for a starting potential to gush through as the team's reliable starter, not an interim depth piece. Not playing as many snaps as he had been throughout his career, but he's still awfully productive. Brandon Knight is taken over at left tackle. Here's Schultz on a tight end screen. Just short of the 15, knocked down by Cameron Curl, a rookie who has taken over the strong safety spot. Been pretty good, hasn't he, for a rookie in the job that he's done. He comes up, he's a physical player, and... And this defense, Joe, you mentioned how good they've been in pass defense throughout the se season, giving up an average of under 200 yards a game, but they've been just as good down here in the red zone. I mean, it's hard to score on this uh, Washington defense. At this end of the field. When you step out on that field, everyone is equal. Talent, it means nothing. They may be more talented than you, but if you show more heart, if you show more focus, if you just decide this day that you will never accept second place to anyone, if you do that, if you all do that, there's no one we cannot defeat. And there's no one that will want to challenge us ever again. So do you want to go out there like every other player, like every other team? Or do you want to stand up this day to make this day count? Make it count. When looking at Curl's season in totality, it's clear that he was a steal in the draft. But what is it about his game that makes him so special? Across the board, he would seem like a decent enough starter, so what made him unique? The answer lies deep within the numbers in a three-pronged approach. The first prong being his ability to wrap up and make stops. A stop is defined as a play in which a defender makes a tackle, and the location of the tackle means the play is a successful one for the defense. It's essentially when a defender keeps the defense on schedule for a 3 and out by minimizing yardage. Cameron Curl tied his team lead and led all safeties in the NFL with 37 stops. Additionally, he was second on his team with 78 total tackles, speaking to his physicality as one of the biggest assets to his playstyle. I know what you're thinking, didn't I say Curl wasn't the best tackler? Well, that is technically still true. He missed 15.2% of his tackles which I blame more on eagerness than a lack of ability, meaning it can be improved. For instance, in his very first game against the Eagles, he missed 40% of his tackles in that game and still managed to be a very bright spot after the fact. This is what I believe his best attribute is, his ability to transcend glaring flaws and make up for that with sparks of dominant and disciplined stonewalls when needed. If he can clean that aspect of his game up, he could be 5 times better overall. The second prong is playmaker ability, interceptions more specifically. That's one facet that was missing from his college tape, it was a knock on a scouting report and until week 14 it seemed to be an aspect of his game that he hadn't rounded out yet. But then he snapped the dry spell with that tremendous pick six against the Niners, which then led to a tip pick against Bridgewater and the Panthers two weeks later, and then a snag against Wentz in their playoff clinching week 17 bout. It was very important for him to get those picks because he added another dimension to his impact on the back end. Because he can now flash the hands, there is both a ball hawk and a hard hitter balanced deep within. The third prong is his versatility and overall flex capacity in the secondary. One of the reasons they liked him as a prospect was his position fluidity. Labeled as a strong safety, he had the second most snaps in the slot, 189, only behind Moreland, the fourth most snaps in the box, 338, and the fourth most reps at free safety, 154. He could be used moderately everywhere on the defense, and that's a masterful skill in itself. They say a jack of all trades is a master of none, but I disagree. I think being proficiently skilled in 5 different categories is just as valuable as being the best in just one. The 7th round pick made 11 starts and took a 3 down roll from week 9 onward. 
Curl was graded number 28 out of 94 qualifying safeties by Pro Football Focus, just locking in his status as a quality starter. Washington should have a formidable duo in 2021 with Curl and Collins paired together, even despite Bobby McCain. The journey of Cameron Curl was a unique one, from his playing days in Muskogee High School to his standout play at Arkansas, all the way to his arduous journey to starting as a safety at the highest level for one of the most elite defenses as a rookie. There are very few players with as underdog-esque and interesting of a storyline as this one. I enjoyed researching the ins and outs of what made him pop on tape and why he arose to league prominence so quickly. I started off the episode talking about the unsung players on the defense. I gave this player a story. Then again, there's so many other great stories to document. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and sub if you like the content. Take it easy!